Hello students, I am once again here with the second video on the poem A Thing of Beauty by John Keats. So in the first video we had learned a little bit about the poet and first few lines of the poem. Now I start from the very next line where we left in the previous video. Spite of despondence, of the inhuman dearth of noble natures, of the gloomy days, of all the unhealthy and over-darkened ways made for our searching. First, let's discuss these lines. The poet says that we always look for noble qualities in the world. We are always in search of great people, noble people, lofty people in the world, selfless people in the world. But we have to feel sad time and again because the world has inhuman dearth. Inhuman means cruel or that is against human values. Dearth means shortage. So there is acute shortage of noble natures, noble natures, noble people, selfless people, right? And then what's there? What's the next thing that is there that we find in the world? That is gloomy days, right? Gloomy days, sad days, disappointing days, right? Of all the unhealthy and over darkened ways, right? So there is unhealthy way. Unhealthy means uh, the poet here refers to the diseases, right? Life threatening diseases. And over darkened ways, the dark parts of life full of negativities, right? Made for our searching. The poet actually means to say that. The world is full of negative things and when we find acute shortage of noble people in the world, when we find that the world and the life is full of sadness and diseases and negativities, all these things cause a kind of despondence in us. Despondence, disappointment dejection or despair right and this despondence or negativity fills us with malice that is such things such negative things fill us with negative feelings also and it looks or it seems that the world is not worth living right now after showing the negative aspect of the world and the life, the poet wants to establish the supremacy of beautiful objects. How? First, he highlights the negativities or the negative aspect of the world. And it seems that the world is not worth living. Immediately, he establishes the supremacy by saying, Yes, in spite of all. It means in spite of all these things, the negativity is just mentioned there. Mentioned here, sorry. Some shape of beauty moves away the ball from our dark spirits. Some shape of beauty. Now it can be a sight of a beautiful place. It can be... Uh, any memory of beautiful object or beautiful face, whenever it flashes on our in, uh, inward or inner mind, it moves away, means removes. Right? What does it remove? The pall. Pall means covering, dark cloud. Right? And where is this dark cloud found? from our dark spirits dark spirits means hopeless inner souls 
hopeless inner souls so the poet here wants to say that in spite of all the negativities that is spread all over the world the memory or the sight of a beautiful object or a place or a thing fills us with new energy it refreshes us and it removes all the darkness or hopelessness from our soul from our spirit and it fills us with joy again and it makes the world worth living right let's move on now the poet is going to count and tell how many uh, objects of beauty of nature we can see all around us and in day to day life such the sun the moon trees old and young sprouting a shady bone for simple sheep and such are daffodils with the green world they live in and clear rills that for themselves a cooling covert make against the hot season the mid forest brake rich with the sprinkling of fair musk rose blooms right uh, we will stop here now let's go back to the line now let's count uh, the objects of nature that the poet considers beautiful actually keats is a lover and worshipper of beauty he loves beauty in all its forms all its forms right be it uh, in the form of celestial bodies like sun and moon then <coughs> he talks about the trees old and young why are trees and trees old and young beautiful because they sprout sprout means produce provide what do they provide they provide or they produce a shady boon boon means blessing shady boon means shelter right so these young and old trees provide or produce the blessing of shelter for simple sheep for lower animals right why does the poet say so he actually imagines the days of summer during which there is a scorching heat of sun not only human beings but animals also want shelter from it so these trees become beautiful because they protect the animals by giving them shelter from uh, the scorching heat of sun then text and such are daffodils with the green world they live in right uh, the poet uh, keats john keats that is is famous for his images sensuous images right and his images i have already so many times repeated that in the simplest way that you want to understand what an image in literature is that is a mental picture or a picture created in our mind with the help of words right so here he creates an image right and uh, these are sensuous images now how can we say that these images appeal to our senses now daffodils consider daffodils flowers they are yellow in color they look appealing to our eyes correct number 1 number 2 their fragrance to our nose number 3 their soft touch to our skin right so keats creates such images as appeal to our senses right so uh, the next thing of beauty that keats mentions here 
are the daffodils flowers and see the contrast daffodils are yellow in color and they are encased e n c a s e d or surrounded by the green leaves all around them so green and yellow the contrast looks beautiful and when they are spread in mass it really appeals to our eyes and it really looks wonderful right and this line can be especially uh, this expression green world they live in this can be explained in two ways number one what i have just explained that these yellow flowers are surrounded by the green leaves number one and number two that these daffodils bloom or blossom in the green area right next the clear rills rills you can see the meaning just after uh, just over the poem ends that is stream small stream of clear water small stream of clear water now again you should remember that the poet has kept in his mind the days of summer what are the things that soothe us during summers right so clear rills that for themselves a cooling covert make against the hot season again hot season refers to summer against means against right so why are these clear rills beautiful because they flow through the thick bushes and trees right and people if they go there and sit under those trees and near the bushes the coolness of the wind passing over the streams soothe them soothe human beings and animals alike that is why these rills are beautiful because they give us relaxation during summer time right next the mid forest break another beautiful image the mid forest break what is break it is the, the, given their fern right uh the mid forest break a um, thick mass of bushes right rich with a sprinkling of fair musk rose blooms rich means grand or uh, with a sprinkling of scattered with right so the bushes are scattered with what with fair musk rose blooms fair musk rose scented flowers right a, a kind of rose right blooms means flowers right so this image can be explained or summarized in this way the site of the uh, thick fern or thick mass of bushes having lots and lots of fair musk rose flowers spread all over them looks beautiful looks appealing to the eyes and now let's move on up till here up till up to this point the poet has mentioned the objects of nature of beauty now he further says that it is not that the beauty is only in nature on it is only found in uh, things and objects and scenes and sights of nature no there are certain things related to human beings also which we consider beautiful so what are they let's move on and such too is the grandeur of the domes we have imagined for the mighty dead see semicolon is here and such too and such too means and same is with what same is with what the grandeur of the domes grandeur it is not grandeur it is either grandeur or grandeur ja or za either is correct 
and such too is the grandeur of the dooms dooms means tragedies ruins rise and fall right we have imagined for the mighty dead mighty dead it means heroes of the past our great ancestors ancestors right so same is with the magnificence that we have associated with the tragic stories of our great ancestors right and all those stories all lovely tales means all those stories that we have heard or read it means all the folklores folklores the legends or local um stories about their heroes right so all these folklores are also beautiful right and all this story or sorry these stories containing uh the details of the mighty dead the great ancestors of our past time these stories are no doubt beautiful right because they fill us with joy they fill us with pride right we are full of sense of pride when we hear them or when we narrate them right and these things are like an endless fountain now another image is there endless fountain there is a fountain and this fountain is endless and where does it flow it is first of all what is this fountain of this fountain is of immortal drink immortal drink is uh, used by gods and goddesses not by human beings right still we, though we are not uh, entitled to taste the immortal drink still through these lovely tales through these beautiful objects through these beautiful scenes and sights of nature and other kinds this immortal drink is available for us right pouring unto us means flowing or coming down unto us means falling on us flowing and falling on us from the heavens brink brink means the extreme edge the corner the border so this endless fountain of beauty this endless fountain of immortal drink falls on these beautiful objects and we also become entitled to tasting the immortality through the objects and scenes and sights of beauty right so all these beautiful things all these beautiful stories are the endless fountain of immortal drink they become immortal that is why they also become the fountain of the endless fountain of immortal drink they become immortal these beautiful objects and scenes and sights and objects everything they become immortal that is why we can also test immortality so in this way the poem is over and through this poem the poet has tried to establish the supremacy of beautiful objects number 1 and he has tried to explain the role of beauty in our life and he has also towards the end said that oh, though we human beings are not entitled to immortality still we can taste it through the the beauty spread all around us though the world is full of negativities selfishness diseases sufferings trials and tribulations pangs of defeat all these things are there but 
the beautiful objects remove all sorts of negative things and fill us with great joy they relax us they refresh us and they also make this world and life worth living so in this way the poet has successfully impressively emphatically and effectively established the role of beauty in our life so with this i conclude thank you very much